Okay. <clears throat> Without the ability to make concentration, the full connection to spirit is never really known. If the mind is always attached to thoughts, then the observer will always follow those thoughts. And what is beyond the mind is never manifested, never shown into your world that you may see or hear. 
the voices beyond the mind. So it is the point of concentration that gains the initial link. And in my medium's experience, it is then the first words that cements that link, holds the connection true. And the bridge is then complete. <clears throat> Today's topic may be of considerable interest we will answer in full truth but also then in a practical nature We need to give the truth in its depth, but also the understanding as you may relate to it. And if there is sufficient time, we will open to questions regarding either the topic or any other topic that is spiritually based. But before we get there, I understand that we have a healing list once more. So may I have those names again, please? All right, <clears throat> here we go. Heidi, Christine, Jeremy, Ann Van Orzel, Lisa Wiggins, Loretta and Michelle Caputo, Stephanos and Andreas, Susan, Angelina, Irene, George, Dimitri, Mira, Peter and Chelsea, Charlotte Burridge, Helen, Carl, Ben, Pippa, Roz and Adelaide, Pia, Sonia, Bernie and Tess Parent, Lena, Julianne Davies, Maureen and Jerry, Margaret McPherson, Emma, Erin, Teresa Neal, Casey, Kristen Howard, Ben and Lucy, Ariel, Ed, and Jane Vartanian. Thank you. Often it is believed that healing should only be taken place when there is a body. But it is also important and of benefit to send healing to those which are transitioning and are newly transitioned away from their body and maybe preparing to enter into a spirit. That period of time, if you like, caught between leaving the physical and entering the spiritual, the memories the requests, the prayers for those which are parted can fill them full of love. So do not minimize thinking of those which are newly gone. 
gone from your world. After all, it is an act of love. So today's topic is what is the difference between God and spirit? Are they the same or are they different? And as I said, we will start rather deep and then become more practical. Now, during this talk, and you may hear or read at times where the two words are changed. Some say spirit is God and some say God is spirit in terms of these definitions. So when you are talking to another who professes to know the answer, I would suggest you check definition. Now, I'm sure within your mind, you would say they are the same thing. One is a part of the other. Whichever way around you would like to use this answer. But the way we will use it here is the word God and I understand that can be emotive for many people. But the word God is the unmanifested, where spirit is the manifested. So God is yet to connect to any limited form and stands beyond creation. And spirit is the connection of God to anything manifested. So you could say God is beyond the universe and spirit is the universe. God is the potential and spirit is the manifestation of that potential. Now, again, uh, the, within the Bible, they talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And as we are talking about the symbols that exist spiritually, this is where Paul will explain these three symbols. Within this part of the Bible, they refer to God, as the Noah, the one that witnesses. So by our definition, we are calling that spirit. They then talk about the sun. Now this is Christ consciousness. This is the act of knowing. And the Holy Spirit would be the object that is being observed. So we have a knower, a known, and a knowing. And yet again, we have that 
Number three, which pervades more parts of creation that are yet to be discovered. So the very fact you are observing anything, you watch your breath, you watch your computer screen, you listen to the words, is the spirit in action, if you wish. the watching and the other thing are uh, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It was said some time ago that you could say creation is like watching a movie. You watch what is going on. You feel like you are part of that movie. But when it ends, you get up and walk out of the theater. Having said, I enjoyed that. The only part you have to play in the movie is how much emotion is passed through you. Think of it in terms of your life. If you look into your life, you could see that Life just seems to happen, and you think you are the one that is doing the living. But there is nothing you can do or not do that affects your spirit. You can choose to cover it over, to hide it to think it is not there, to not use it, if you wish. But it is totally unaffected by anything that goes on in your life. But when there is the application of love into your life, you see it reflected in the world. There's love in your heart, there is love in the world. If there's peace with you, you see peace everywhere. And when the body crumbles and is no longer of use, you exit the theater of the world. and stand outside deciding what movie you will see next time. So God is the potential. Spirit is when that potential is made real and can be observed and watched. So again, you can see the threefold path. Another name for God is Satchitananda, truth, consciousness and bliss. Does not Sat Chit Ananda 
truth, consciousness and bliss also explain the movie, the observer and the emotion that goes into the world. So let us make this more practical for you, so you can understand. And see this in action within your world and choose to be living by it or not. <clears throat> During the course of your life, most likely in a relatively short period of time from now, there will be obstacles that you will face, challenges if you wish to call them that, situations that you will have to move past, move around or battle your way through. You'll have difficulties with, let us say, your work or your loved ones, your family, your friends. You will have the difficulties that you will have to face. That is the random nature of life. That things arise and you know not where they come from or where they will go. The most important aspect is to understand that you can observe. You can watch your life in play. You can watch the world as it goes along its merry way, undertaking all that it must do. You could witness the trials, the tribulations of others and see them within yourself. You could watch the pain that you may face if you lose, let's say, those that you love or your assets or your sense of being or even your esteem. All of this can be lost and will be lost. All of this that is created in your world will have to drop away and change. You look into the world and you see change, you see variety, you see no similarity or very little. You see the world full of those with one body shape and those with another and judge and say that they are too tall or too short or too intelligent or too stupid. And then you say they should be different, they should learn, they should develop, they should change their beliefs or appearance. All of this cements yourself within the physical world. You do not step beyond it, but live amongst it. You are caught in the trap like a fly in the web. And being caught there, you struggle and you suffer and you have pain. And within the life, you say, it could be so different if only. I wish, why does this happen to me? Why am I the only one in the world to have this illness, this problem, this situation to face? Why can I have not so much difficulty? And you ask and say, take away my problems. 
give me what is easy. Give me more simplicity or more love or more feelings of abundance. And there are industries which have been created to teach people how to have more abundance, how to have an easier life, how to step away from life, how to control your children, to deal with those which are problematic of mind. Mankind then says, let's look for deeper answers, answers in the space or deepest ocean. Let's look within the body. They find cures for different ailments, exercises that to do to give more peace of mind. And although these can have some effect, can give some simplicity and ease within a short period of time, once those remedies are let go of, the old life returns. And man faces the challenge once more and says, that way did not work for me. I must look for another cure. I must chase one more tablet or an extra piece of advice. You do not solve the problems of your world with the mind that created the problem. It is the mind that creates. The spirit decides on the experience required and the mind then creates the circumstance. So you must come back to either creating a new mind or stepping beyond it. The attempts to create a new mind means it is a long road of clearing away the dust that hides the light. You pick a dust particle up and move it to the side and move more and more only to turn back and see that there is deeper levels of your problems to work through. For everything that is cleared, another takes its place. Yet underneath that dust shines the one light what, when first realized, appears to be many lights, your light, your light, and another's light, all appear separate. And although cleaning away your dust can give you a more content light, It does not take you beyond it until you take the next steps. You must walk past the mind and come into spirit. 
You must die before you die. If you want realization in this life. Be it this life or another, eventually you will take this path. It is the path home, the path to understanding, to path to become the light, to go past the light. So you can sit in God as the, as the darkless dark and the lightless light. So I have said to some for you to understand and see yourself first. to look inwards, to find you. Where do I exist? What is the nature of myself? Where am I? And these words have been spoken to you many times from many sources, and they have lit a candle within you, the dissatisfaction to life within you. The, the knowing that there is something more, something further, somewhere else to go. Many do not feel satisfied with the world any longer and walk the path up the mountain in the snow towards the nourishment of their soul. Look inside you, find out what makes up me. And you say to yourself then, when you look with sufficient concentration, you say, I am the experiences of life. I am the beliefs the values, the pains that have been lived. But your beliefs and values were given to you. They are not you. Your parents taught you and you took on their values as they took on their parents. The value that some have in money and comfort If I took those away from you, your finances and your need for comfort, do you still exist or not? You would have to say, yes, I do still exist, but I do not feel whole. Let us take them away and let you discover that you can exist happily and merrily without either. Or say, what if I lost my esteem or my partner? If you lost it, do you still exist? I do. What if I lost the use of my body? I am my body. Do you still exist? I do. The very connection of spirit you cannot avoid. You cannot take away that that you are. But you can see it and believe it to be something it is not. 
You are the manifestation of God, the spirit. You see it in the observation of all your life. Write a list and say what you are. And then cross off that list. When you look back on it, cross off the things which, if I lost them, would I exist? Still. And what you have left is what you are. It is often thought that you are the thinker. I am not the thought, I am the thinker. Then stop attaching to the thoughts. The thoughts of pain will give you an appearance of pain. The thoughts of love will give you an appearance of love. The thoughts of difficulty and challenge will give you the appearances of challenge. This is the mind in action. Bring your mind into calm and still and see that you exist when there is no mind. It is often said that you are God. You are a spark within the light. And you hear these words and you say, well, okay, but how am I going to live? How will I get to work? Will I be late? Come into your reality of who you are. Be the very nature of your being and open your heart and let love flow through it. And you will feel the manifestation of spirit into the world. And yet you are beyond that. So some time ago, a challenge was given to you to have 10 seconds with no thoughts and then to increase that time. I ask you again to continue this practice and realize without the thoughts of who you are, you become who you are. Without the thoughts, I am male or female or this nationality or another, you become humanity. As Krishna said, I am the humanness in humans. I am the sapidity of water. That is the truth of who you are too. If you wish to change the world, be 
You are the essence of your being. The very essence. So hard to describe. So difficult to reach and to grab hold of. But you know it is there. And when you connect to it, you connect to your essence. And you find that essence in another. Love is born. What is your essence? What is your true nature? Why do I struggle with the small when I am so great? So if God is the unmanifested and spirit is the manifestation or the connection to the creation, then come back into that essence of you and you will realize you are God. That's attached or watching the creation now. Now, if you remember in the talk prior, we spoke about the light, the blue light with the white center. And we said, if you go and hold your attention there, you'll merge with the light and you'll go beyond it, through it. So it is the light I talk about that will give you the direction you must travel. The light is the spirit and God is beyond the light. For those that can sit in meditation for long enough with sufficient practice will know that they sit at times in the unmanifested, the darkness, the darkless dark, if you wish, where something seems to happen, but there appears to be nothing. The no experience experience. If you ever sit in meditation and assuming you do not fall asleep, those that teach reach this point will know that they close their eyes and open them in a matter of seconds for one hour to have gone. This is where you have been. And you say, oh, my life is not spiritual, but you can sit in the unmanifested, the Godhead. 
the potential to be before the being. It is not hard to reach these states. It is not beyond anyone. Because it is the essence of everyone. You just need time. Some direction. And practice. So you could say. God is the dark, spirit is the light. Hmm. Now, again, all other talks connect at this point. Watch your life and watch yourself attached to the small. Let it go. Become the essence. Now, if you wish, We have time for a question or two. Is there anyone that would like to ask? Or seeks further clarity? Yes, we, we have a question from um, Taylor. Taylor, would you like to unmute yourself? Yes, thank you. Um, my question is about trance development. Is it okay to sit every day for spirit when sitting alone, or is it better to sit only a few times a week? Mm. My dear, the more you sit to connect to your true self, the better it is for you. You'll find that this practice may start once or twice. Then over a period of time, the practice will become more enjoyable the nearer to your truth you become. You'll find then that the addiction to sitting will occur. Your egoic self will resist this, knowing that it is threatened by the process of connecting to spirit. So the more time you spend in the joy of reconnection, the greater the reconnection will be and the feeling of bliss and love and peace will become more natural. In essence, the talk was saying that you can become this not just in periods of practice, but in all aspects of your life. So if you wish, start and build. But I would suggest to you that the habit of sitting regularly will help your mind and your body come to terms with what you are doing. By sitting in your practice of connection to spirit, you are opening your life up to spirit. Those which have sufficient experience will know that a spiritual nature starts with 10 minutes in the morning. And within a period of time, becomes a practice of 24 hours a day. It starts with the formal practice of sit, eyes closed, 
and ends with the practice of walking with eyes open. So the more you sit, the more you connect, the more you will want to sit, the more truth will come into your life, the more peace and love, and that itself will become more real. than any need in the physical world. It is often said that those in the physical world, when they find their reality, have no fear of death. They have no fear because they have touched it and moved beyond it. They have found their truth beyond their illusion. So yes, start with 10 minutes and eventually it'll become your life. And whether that then is manifested in the form of one style of mediumship or another will also change if you follow this path sufficiently. It is not so much the method of expression, but the ability to hold it that becomes important. The expression will take care of itself. So those which find their truth when initially searching for mediumship will then decide to let go of that mediumship. It may still appear, but it becomes less important. Not as important as the connection to their truth. So any which sufficiently walk the path of finding spirit, Mediumship will not always satisfy them. But it still may be there. It still may be something they do. But it is not who they are. So, my dear, walk your path by sitting still. Start with 10 minutes, if you wish, three times a week. But that will build into more if you are dedicated and true. I trust this answers your question. Yes, thank you so much. Is there another? Yes, we have a question from Malada. Malada, would you like to ask your question? Hi, Ignatius. Um, <sighs> I would like to ask <clears throat> if you have some insight about some of the visions that I seem to be receiving from some of the great teachers that the visions have messages for more than just myself. You may have noticed within the talk the reference to these experiences. There was the mention of walking the mountain path to reach a point of nourishment, to walk the path to reach what is there. The path of many appears to be a lonely path, a path that I must walk and no other one knows, until there comes a point when you see others with you and they are most required. And as you walk that path, then you see that there are others walking the same path. Yet you must put one foot in front of the other yourself. 
and walk forward. You will come to a point where you will stop. And your very blessing and your nature of what you are connected to to experience is the point of guiding others to this path and along the journey yourself. You will take others along the path. You will say, walk with me. Look what I have learned. Let me be your guide and assistant. Let me show you your light. Let me be the candle that walks the path in front of you. Let me show you your way so you can show us. My dear, you are learning the way of a guide. A guide to others to show them the way that they too must walk. There is the gaining of knowledge and the realization of truth which you are going through. And when you look on your path, you may look forward to the side and beyond, behind, and know that there are others also walking the path. But the one in front must know that there are others behind. And the one in front must clear the path. So the one behind does not trip. If he misses a stone, the one behind will have a stumble. Not just a stumble for that person, but a stumble that the one in front must also acknowledge. You should dwell on what I have just said. Walking the path. And cleaving the stones. It is symbolic, an analogy. You cannot lead another until you have embodied the light. The light burns within you, my dear. You know what I am talking about. And you have many glimpses of truth. And you have been led by many of different names. You have been guided by seeing the truth and the clarity, not just of light, but of the knowledge that exists beyond existence. You are becoming the very being that many will need, many will follow and desire. You think you know not enough. But you do not need to know. You just need to know where to get the knowledge from. One day you will become connected to the greats. The time it takes you is your choice. And when you leave this life,
you will decide to come into our world to guide others again. And your voice will be heard through other mediums. You will do the talks as I am doing now. Because you have learned to be careful of the stones on the path. This is your last time to be a disciple, my dear. And the time is coming where you will be the master. So a master must always be taught by a higher up master. And that by another that is higher. And so on. Your path for this life and other lives is being laid bare in front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I honor you. And I honor you for today and I honor you for tomorrow. Walking up mountains is never easy. So I leave you all with peace in your heart. Until next week. God bless you all.